Hello, I am Sherilyn Wood Stalling. I am passionate about bees and I am very concerned for humanity because our bees are dying worldwide. In my previous YouTube video, I told you about neonicotinoids, which are a systemic pesticide. Systemic means that the chemicals penetrate the entire plant, no matter where you put it on. So it goes into the roots, leaves, flowers, and anything the flowers produce. Seeds, fruits, vegetables, nuts. Neonicotinoids cause four scary symptoms. As I name them, think about children you know who exhibit these symptoms. One, severe digestive or gut problems. Two, a weakened immune system. Three, loss of memory or perhaps trouble sorting information logically. And four, bizarre or disoriented behavior. Sounds like autism, doesn't it? However, in spite of that bad news, I have some fabulous news from the EPA. June 22nd, 2009, they formed the Pollinator Protection Team and are going to reevaluate the way they assess pesticide risk to bees. In May 2008, Germany suspended use of clothinidine as seed treatment for corn. In 2009, Slovenia did the same thing with Italy, suspending use of all neonics and fipronil, which happens to be another systemic. In 2000, France had already suspended the use of amidochloroprid on corn and sunflower crops. Recently, I talked to Bob Ulrich of Hidden Valley Fruit Farms, north of Cincinnati. Here's what he told me. In the 1970s, the native bees were so loud in his apple orchards that he could hardly stand the racket from all the buzzing. And in the fall, the apple trees were way laden down with lots and lots of apples. Then suburbia started taking up the land around the apple groves. People started spraying their lawns and flowers and trees with chemicals. And in his apple orchards, the bees started to be less and less until his apple orchards were silent. So Bob began to hand pollinate. Yes, I did say here in the United States of America, a man was hand pollinating his apple orchards, but that became too labor intensive. So now he pays beekeepers $100 a hive to come in and pollinate the apple blossoms, but his apple trees have never produced as many apples again. And why? Because it takes 10 or more domesticated honeybees to keep up with the pollination power of one bumblebee. Of course, the cost of his apples have gone up, and Bob says no one is looking at the connection between the food industry and the lawn and home care industry and the resulting effects, loss of pollinators. Bet you have seen the new ads on television about chemicals that penetrate your grass and long after you put the poison on the grass, the bugs keep dying. Would you think so highly of your precious lawn and exterminating all those bugs if you knew that in just two years or less, that lawn is one of the reasons that you, you might, might be paying, paying twice, twice or, or more for, for your food. food? California San Joaquin Valley has had three years of drought, and farmers planted one-third of what they normally planted. And next year, some of them are planning on not planting at all if there is no rain. Does your lawn seem as valuable as it did five minutes ago? If poison is so great with those bugs that it, on the grass, do you want your children playing on that grass? Is there a real connection with the rise in autism in our children and the ridiculous desire to get rid of all these bugs? Have we sprayed? dusted and exterminated ourselves into a world of unteachable children, fibromyalgia, autoimmune disorders, and cancers. A new study just released by UC Berkeley researchers have found increased vulnerability to children up to age of seven from the toxic effects of pesticides. If these poisons are so hard on our children, is it any wonder some of our native bees are nearly extinct? Oh, before I go on, I think you should know that native bees are mainly solitary ground dwellers. 
They live 11 months of the year under the ground. They do not have big colonies. At most, a bumblebee colony will be maybe a couple hundred, but usually it's lots less. Yes, native bees do not swarm like honeybees, for there are very few of them. And those carpenter bees that you see buzzing around, those are the drones. <laughs> they have no stinger. We need to teach our children that rather than seeing these beautiful little creatures as something horrible to avoid and kill, that these are the wonderful helpers we have that help us by pollinating plants and thus giving us fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Yeah. A beekeeper, David Hackenberg, took his bees to the almond groves in California last spring and told me the area was like a war zone because only almond trees grew. There was no grass. There was no flowers. There was no wild anything that was a bush or another tree. So I called the almond board to find out what pesticides were used on the almond groves. I was referred to another agency and found out on non-organic almonds there are 42 different pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides used. 42! Isn't that overkill? And two of those pesticides were organophosphates which, in case you don't know, are like nerve gas to humans. So why did our EPA ever allow such horrific material to be used on produce we eat? Why aren't these chemicals labeled on the produce? What is happening to all our other foods because organophosphates aren't just used on almonds? Is it any wonder our bees are dying? Please do your part and stop the use of chemicals. Let part of your yard or all of your lawn become wildflowers or a vegetable garden. Plant a bee-friendly flower. Have a pot of herbs or tomatoes, anything to feed bees and ourselves. Here in Arkansas, we have a blueberry farm and the blueberry bushes are heavily weighted down by berries. The organic farmer and his wife have planted wildflowers that bumblebees love. And that is what pollinates their blueberries. If one farmer in Arkansas does this, you know others will and can. There's another beekeeper in Arkansas, Eddie Walkins, who should get some kind of scientific grant. This man has for years been developing a breed of bees crossing native bees and honey bees so that he produces a stronger bee resistance to virus and such. And what he has done is truly such a great thing. But this April, six of one of his 100 hives died from pesticide kill. Easy to tell because they're dead on the ground. And those generations are gone now. Six valuable queen bees are gone because somebody within two miles of those hives, some homeowner sprayed his lawn, put something on the flowers that killed those bees. What you do to your lawn and garden directly affects your food supply, whether you know it or not. Bear brags about how wonderful it is to kill off all the bugs. What Bear does not brag about is the long-term price we are all paying. The good insects gone, and the destructive insects immune to even the worst poisons. And amidochloroprid is known as the greatest poison because it supposedly kills every bug known to humanity. Do you really believe that an even greater poison than that is something you want around you or put on the ground or on the food you eat? You think it's safe for you or your children? Please, see the beauty of all pollinators, from butterflies and hummingbirds to bees, moths, wasps, hornets, and all the other tiny helpers in nature. Thank you.